Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with steadfastness and steadfastness with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love. I'm Aubrey Johnson, minister of the Old Hickory Church of Christ, speaking to our Lyft teams and speaking to those who are watching this video online about the introduction to the eight virtues that we've been studying since the beginning of the year. We've weekly been looking at these eight virtues and trying to understand them and incorporate them into our lives. But this month in our three lift meetings, we're going to look at the words preceding and the words following the eight virtues. Tonight, we're going to look at make every effort. Make every effort to supplement your faith. And there's basically three things that I want us to think about. Number one is effort. What is the key to success? It's understanding, in part, it is understanding that life responds to applied effort, consistent applied effort. Now, I know some people would quote the book of Ecclesiastes, where Solomon says in chapter 1 and verse 3, what benefit do people get from all the effort which they expend on the earth? That sounds a little pessimistic. In chapter 2 of Ecclesiastes, in verse 11, he continues, yet when I reflected on everything I had accomplished and on all the effort that I had expended to accomplish it, I concluded all these achievements and possessions are ultimately profitless, like chasing the wind. There is nothing gained from them on earth. Well, let's understand, if we're talking about how much money you make or how nice of a palace you live in, then certainly uh, we would agree with him. Earthly goes can be selfish goals, but what if they're spiritual goals? We need to be focusing our effort on the right things or else, he says, it's profitless. We're just wasting our time. So we want faith-motivated effort, not pride-motivated effort. We want spiritual goals, not selfish or sinful goals. So let's think about this effort. Effort is more than I tried. It's more than just an attempt. Effort refers to a, a rigorous attempt, a determined attempt. And that's a totally different thing from wistfully longing for something. It's different from wishful thinking. It's different from uh, professions that something was important. It's more important than just good intentions. It is determined doing. Now let's think about this word every, make every effort, because sometimes we kid ourselves about that. We think we have done all that we know to do when we've tried one or two things and it didn't turn out and we excuse ourselves from more serious engagement. When he says make every effort, he's saying you need to undertake meaningful goals, spiritual goals, conscientiously. You need to do it seriously. Leave no stone unturned. You need to be exhaustive. And so he's talking about the seriousness with which we undertake these things. In John chapter 19 and verse 12, Pilate, it says, made every effort to release Jesus, at least in his own mind. He thought he did, but all he had to do was say, let him go. It was in his power. He's the man who made the decision. And what the text is really saying is he made every effort, but he never could get the Jews to agree. And if he couldn't get the Jews to agree because they said, 
Well, if you release him, you're no friend of Caesar's. Then he wasn't willing to go any further. He didn't really make every effort. Kind of reminds me of marriage. A lot of times men say, I made every effort to please her. I made every effort to hold things together. Really? Did you pray every morning and every night for God to help you become a better husband? Did you get down on your knees for her? Did you read many books that might help you to understand and become better in the marriage relationship? Did you get counseling? Did you take a course on anger management? Did you go to uh, AA? I mean, I don't know what the situation was, but did you really do everything that you could do? In most cases, probably not. So we need to quit kidding ourselves and go the second mile. In the Bible, it often talks about making every effort. I think about Ephesians chapter four and verse three. It says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. You're not going to have peace and unity in a congregation full of people with different ideals and opinions and feelings and needs if you're not going to make every effort. It says that we need to make every effort in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 to present ourselves proven workmen who do not need to be ashamed. Are you serious about your Bible study? Are you making every effort to grow in wisdom and knowledge? In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 11, it says, make every effort to enter that rest. Do you want to be in heaven? Is that your top priority? Or in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, make every effort to live in peace. Well, if you're making every effort, then why did you say that thing <laughs> that triggered the other person? Well, we understand we need to make an effort, not just an attempt, but effort. We're talking about grit, doggedness, tenaciousness, determination. We need to make every effort, an exhaustive effort, a serious effort. And that's something that you must make. That is, to make something is to create something, to construct something, and it's talking about responsibility. It's talking about initiative. If it's going to be, it's up to me. So God allows us, invites us, encourages us to make every effort. And let me give you an example. Is there a cherry pie on the counter in your kitchen? If not, why not? Well, it's because you didn't make it or you didn't buy it. But do you have any question that if you want that, that tomorrow there could be a cherry pie on your counter or on your supper table or in your mouth. There's no doubt about it, but we have to decide. You see, that's the point. Peter's saying you've got to choose to build your character. You've got to choose to make an all out effort in this regard. And if you do, you can be successful. Life is about deciding what you want to make of it. So I want to encourage you to choose well. Your time, your attention, your money, those are limited resources. So what do you want to make? Your body, your character, your reputation, your family, a friend? Well, it's up to you. In 1 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 14, David is having a conversation with his son Solomon he says, now look, I have made every effort to supply what is needed to build the Lord's temple. I've stored up 100,000 talents of gold, 1 million talents of silver, and so much bronze and iron, it cannot be weighed as well as wood and stones. Feel free to add more. 
Did David make every effort? Absolutely. Look at the proof. And we need to have evidence and proof of our effort to live for God and to please God. David was building up the first temple and we're to build up God's temple because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your heart and your mind are indwelt by God. And so we need to be serious about constructing a beautiful character in our lives as a dwelling place of God, one of purity, one of holiness, one of love. Make every effort to supplement. What do you mean supplement? Correct any deficiencies. Get rid of any gaps that are there so that we can become mature and Christ-like in our lives. We need to construct a God-pleasing character that will make us more useful to our loved ones and to Jesus' church and to reach the lost. Thank you for being with us for this Lift video as we're looking at the introduction of the eight virtues. Next time, we'll be looking at what is said afterwards and concluding remarks. But I think this is going to help us really take these eight virtues to the next level. I hope you enjoy the discussion handouts that are going to be a part of the, the meeting that follows. Thank you for being with us for Lyft. God bless. Make every effort.